great weather. Can't beat this. I moved a lot of stuff, but never moved a German stealth fighter before. Awesome. This is the first time we're actually getting a feel for what it looks like, as if it was flying. While it won't actually fly, the 229 will be mounted five stories off the ground, so radar can be directed at it. With delicate precision, they lower the German fighter onto the RCS pole. Three months of work hang in the balance. It's great up there. Oh, it does. It looks great. It really does. Time for the moment of truth. Six decades after the first flight of the Horton fighter, the legend of its stealth is about to meet reality. Deep inside a secure control room on the edge of California's Tehachapi Mountains, the Northrop Grumman team is about to do something the Nazis never did. Hey guys. Hey Tom. Test the stealth Great. of the Horton so, yeah. flying wing. To get a complete picture of the fighter's stealth capabilities, They'll rotate the Horton 229 to illuminate it by radar from every angle. We're doing pretty much level and nose on the first set of spins. Each rotation does a frequency band. We're doing VHF, UHF, and L band. This wide range of frequencies will give DeBrents and his team a better idea of the fighter's radar cross section. So we want to make sure that we get enough of that data in order to characterize in each one of those systems how the vehicle performs. Okay, we're starting our next spin now. At this frequency, you can tend to see a lot more of the characteristics of the, of the inlets and the, and the canopy area up in the front of the vehicle. The inlets specifically, you know, where energy is going down and hitting the front of the engine frames is, is showing up. They want to determine if the Nazi fighter could have indeed penetrated the radar array along the British coast known as the chain home system. And I'll be really uh, fascinated to see how, after we process the data and get some numbers, what the, what the performance of this aircraft really would have been like against the chain home radar system. Yeah, we have to do a lot of post-processing in order to get the actual numbers that we can use for comparison against the uh, fighters and bombers of the day. We're ready to go. Number 74 Inside their advanced like air combat minutes. facility, Northrop Grumman can test the capability of nearly any aircraft in the world. It's here they'll conduct the second test on the Horton 229, flying it in a simulated attack on Britain and hitting it with Allied radar to determine its stealth. All systems are reconfigured and we have been... Flying the jet will be Paul T.P. Smith. Roger, I've got altitude 20,000 feet, 600 knots. TP will approach the British coastline from a variety of altitudes. His target, a chain home radar station. Fighters are in the air and on intercept vectors. In the Battle of Britain, chain home radar system, the low system, had a range of about 100 to 110 miles, which could see across the channel and into France. They could see the German fighters marshalling before they ever crossed the channel. To help reduce their detection range, German aircraft began flying across the English Channel at altitudes as low as 50 feet. But by early 1945, any chance for a German victory had been lost. By mid-April, the Allies are closing in on the Nazi Sonderkommando 9. Although they've nearly finished a second 229, the Horton brothers flee leaving behind their dream of arming the Luftwaffe with flying wing fighters and long-range bombers. 63 years after the surviving Horton 229 was discovered by the U.S. Army and shipped back to the United States, the Batwing fighter begins to reveal its secrets. So you can see that the nose, the inlets, that canopy area, is, that's where a major part of the uh, radar reflection is coming from. It looks like with all the data that uh, this aircraft would have made a major, major difference. All about about a 20% reduction 
in the actual uh, detection range. Once detected by radar, a conventional fighter of the time approaching at high altitude takes 19 minutes to reach the target. With its stealth and speed advantage, the Horton 229 covers the same distance in less than eight minutes. While the Horton's advantage in detection range is on the order of 20%, the combination of speed and stealth was absolutely lethal. But even if you did detect it, it was so fast, it would have been extremely difficult for any of the Allied fighters at the time to have been able to catch it. You can imagine the, uh, the amount of improvement that the Port 229 could have given to the German warfighter. I surely wouldn't want to have been the Allied forces. Had the 229 adopted the low-level tactics employed by the Luftwaffe, the results could have been devastating. Fifty feet, traveling at around 600 miles an hour, plus the reduction in the detection range. Now you've got only two and a half minutes of reaction time for the Allies to to know you were coming. Your response time then with low altitude, uh, when you only have 24 miles, that's two and a half minutes, um, you just don't have the time to respond. If you could keep them from seeing you and getting their defensive systems up, you create such an element of surprise. You can now basically roam at will and attack the targets that you want to. predates modern stealth technology by more than three decades. If the Germans had deployed it in great numbers, uh, it would have been a game changer. After decades of speculation and debate, Northrop Grumman has finally unlocked the mysteries of the Nazi stealth fighter. But the 229 wasn't the only Horton stealth aircraft ordered into production. The characteristics and things that we, had, that we saw on the Horton 229 would translate directly to the Horton 18, which was the larger version of the Horton 229. Goring was very clear that by 1946 they would have a nuclear bomb and the Horton 18 would be used to deliver that bomb on an American city like New York or Washington. Even if you manage to detect uh, a Horton 18 bomber approaching the east coast of the United States, you probably would have only had about eight minutes of warning time, which would have been totally inadequate to mount any kind of defense against it. While the stealth flying wing would have been a lethal fighter, its use as Hitler's long-range bomber is unthinkable. It's a terrifying thought in a lot of ways because if the Third Reich was able to use them operationally before the Allies understood they were there, those first few strikes with those airplanes could have been devastating. 